The problem with coming from nowhere and everywhere is that no matter how people describe you, even if they show tremendous goodwill and curiosity, you still feel mislabeled, misunderstood, sometimes even reduced. At what point did you start feeling this way? Gosh, for as long as I can remember, to be honest, because my family, and I wanted to tell this universal story of displacement, of migration. My family was an Arab Syrian family in the US Midwest, you know? And so very early on, you realize your name is different. You realize your parents speak another language. They eat different food. And it's not just Arabs who live in the US who feel this way. It's, you know, it could be Latinos. It could be people of a different religion or ethnicity. Uh, when they are the minority, I write in my book, you belong sometimes to a tribe of one because you're the only kid of that background and the only one who's, you know, um, uh, whose parents' country of origin is so different from where they've ended up settling. Did you, then in that case, did you ever feel that home, you can find a home, you didn't feel at home anywhere when you yeah. belong to so many strands, you have so many identities? Absolutely. Some people will say I feel at home everywhere because I feel at home nowhere. But I felt at home nowhere. And I still yeah. feel at home really nowhere. People ask you, where are you from? Where would you like to live if you had your choice of cities and money was no object. And I'd have to think long and hard and think, I really don't know. And I think what I realized in the book, again, hoping that this is a universal story that can appeal to people outside of my own mm. small group, is that in the journey you find your home, which is why you choose journalism yeah. sometimes, yeah. I think. A lot of people choose journalism yeah. for that reason because they want to keep searching for reflections of themselves and the stories of the, of, uh, that they tell of the people who they, they, they cover. I wonder if you can talk about the moment because I know you as Hala Gharana, we all know you as Hala Gharani, but you're actually Hala Asha. Yeah. Uh, you spoke three languages, you speak three languages, but you changed some details of your CV and you used your mother's name instead of your father's. Yeah. Talk to, to that. Yeah, and that was a very deliberate uh, move on my part. When I was in my 20s, so this was the 90s in Paris, I just graduated from a pretty elite university in France, uh, thinking, okay, this is kind of gonna be an easy journey now from now on. I've proven myself, I've ticked that box, I've gone to the right school, I have two years of journalism experience behind me. So I put together my resume, and on the resume there was, you know, my name, Hala Basha. My dad's last name was actually Ibrahim Basha. Removed the Ibrahim early on, my family <laughs> did, because that was kind of a mouthful. As many immigrant pa yeah, families yeah. do, by the way, they modify their name, they anglicize it, or they whatever, westernize it. And I had Arabic as a spoken language and I wasn't getting any callbacks. And so one of my friends from school said, listen, I would recommend that you remove the Arabic because, you know, in France, it's a society where there is institutional racism and certainly discrimination against members of that minority. And that's proven in numerous um, uh, experiments mm. where uh, fictitious resumes are sent with an Arabic name versus a Western name and the Arabic name gets a lot less uh, uh, traction. So I removed that. I took Gorani, which was a Western sounding name. I added a photo, blonde and blue eyed, <laughs> don't look Arab. And I removed the fact that I spoke Arabic, which is grotesque because it's an asset. It yeah. should not be seen as a liability. I mean, it is, it is a story about, it's a journey about your identity, but also um, about lots of aspects of history, history of the Middle East. Mm. You covered the uprising in Egypt. Um, Tunisia, parts of it as well. There's one little snippet, and the, the, my favorite parts, uh, you really take us into Aleppo. And I wonder if you can read, Hala, this bit for us, up to here. Today, as I read my notes, I feel a quasi-physical pain, knowing that the hopes of the university students I interviewed that day were likely never realized. The country's youth would later be betrayed, shot, imprisoned, or exiled they were sacrificed. Obviously, you've got a personal connection yeah. to Aleppo uh, and to Syria. How hard was that moment for you seeing, you know, hearing their dreams uh, and then what came after and what still is occurring right now? Listen, I call it a quasi-physical pain because in 2005, there was that brief window when the new regime 
decided that they were going to kind of loosen the leash a little mm. bit. And there was real hope. And these young people were for the first time starting to say things like, we need, you know, a transition of power and we need to be able to express ourselves freely. And you really felt, and this was a time when investment was going into Syria, when you really felt like the country was maybe on a path that was finally positive of openness mm. and of freedom. Then 2011 happened and immediately you saw that these regimes cannot survive unless they have total control. And in the most brutal way, they shut that down. And what I describe in the book is that for me, the death of, well, the death is too harsh a word, but that the, the, the suffering of Syria is like losing a family member because I don't go there anymore. And it's like seeing a family member ill, mm. you know, in bed. I mean, given that, I mean, how much is writing this book? How much do you think is a cathartic process? Not just for you, but also um, for your mother, who you dedicate this book yeah. to. Uh, I think, um, I, unfortunately, it didn't really heal the wound because yeah. the wound is still there. Because it's what still makes me feel emotional, and all of the of all the experiences I had, mm. the 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 Syria, the death of the Syria I knew is still what really really saddens me, definitely.